Thank you for joining us for another edition of Chicano Music Chronicles with Mark Guerrero. Mark Guerrero is a singer-songwriter and recording artist who's been making music since he was a teenager in East Los Angeles in the 60s as part of what has become known as the East Side Sound. He's the son of the late great father of Chicano music, Lalo Guerrero. Mark Guerrero, who has a degree in Chicano studies from Cal State Los Angeles, is dedicated to preserving the rich cultural heritage of Chicano music. And now, here's Mark Guerrero. Welcome to Chicano Music Chronicles. The focus of this edition of Chicano Music Chronicles is the music of the legendary Trini Lopez. Trinidad Lopez III was born and grew up in a barrio of Dallas, Texas. From this humble beginning, he went on to achieve international stardom. The Trini Lopez story is more than a rags to riches story, it sounds more like a fantasy. Trini was signed to his first major record deal by the great Frank Sinatra and headlined Over the Beatles at the Olympia Theater in Paris, France in 1963. Trini Lopez has sold tens of millions of records and has released 60 albums to date. His first album, Trini Lopez Live at PJ's, shot up to number two on the national charts where it stayed in the top 40 for 48 weeks. It remained on the charts for over two years. The first hit single from the album, If I Had a Hammer, was number one in 25 countries. I'm pleased to have Trini Lopez in studio to talk about his music and career. Trini, welcome to Chicano Music Chronicles. Thank you for coming. Mark, my pleasure. My pleasure to be here. Your first huge hit single, If I Had a Hammer, which came off your first album, Trini Lopez Live at PJ's, what gave you the idea to record that song? Everybody asks me that all the time, and it's interesting because people say, did you record it because you know it was going to be a hit? I said, no, no way, no. You know, when you record, as you well know, Mark, you being an entertainer and a singer and a guitar player, we don't know uh, what's going to be a hit, you know. If we did, we'd be geniuses. I just happen to like the song. I like the material. I like the lyric of the song. And, of course, I like the melody. But I, I didn't like the way that Peter, Paul, and Mary had recorded it. The beat was, you know, it was kind of dull, you know. So I put my Latin beat in there. All right. Yeah, I put the Trinity beat in there. And that became not only more interesting and more lively, but also that people could dance to the song besides listen to the lyric, because the lyric is a very worthwhile message. So I, I wanted to give it a nice beat, and it became one of the big disco songs of that time, 1962-63. All right. Well, here's If I Had a Hammer. Trini, so your first album, Trini Lopez Live at PJ's, also produced a big hit with La Bamba, and this was long before uh, the movie came out in the 80s. This was early 60s. It was just a few years after Richie Valens' original version. Uh-huh. Yes, two, three years after Richie. And what inspired you to do that? Uh, I like the song very much because my dad taught me that song when I was much younger than Richie Valens was. I was about five, six years older than Richie. And I was doing it long before him. And my father was a singer, a musician, and an actor, and a dancer in Mexico when he was a young man. So he taught me that song when I was real young, and uh, I just used to sing it all the time. And then I heard Richie come out with it, on, and they was on the radio and everything. And I said, oh, darn it. I said, somebody beat me to it. You know? But then it was meant to be my song because four or five years later, I go into, into the studio. Uh, no, no, live at PJ's. Excuse me, live at PJ's. And, uh, and the song came out as a single, and it was a hit all over the world. All right. Yeah. Here's Trini's version of La Bamba. Trini Lopez live at PJ's was such a huge success that they did a sequel. Yeah. What was it called? They wanted to do a, another another album, at Live at PJ's. And I said to Don Costa, I said, Don, he was my producer, the great Don Costa. I said, Don, you told me that after this album we could go into a studio. And he says, oh, I promised you that, but your first album was such a big hit. It was on the charts on Billboard and Cashbox for over two years. He says, we got to do another one. I said, another one here? He says, yeah, but I said, Don, after that, can we go to the studio like everybody else? He said, yeah, you got it. I promise. I said, oh, okay. So went in and do it, did another one. And it was called More Trini Lopez at PJs by popular demand. <laughs> and that produced a, a hit of the classic song Kansas City, right? Yes. Uh, the, another single came out of my second album, and that was uh, the, the famous song made famous by Wilbur Harrison, Kansas City. And what made you pick that song to do? 
you know, I was listening to the radio like everybody else, you know, and I, I like different songs that I used to hear, and I just did them because I just liked the songs, never thinking, you know, that it, there would be a hit for me. It certainly was. And yeah. Years. Uh, this was written by Lieber and Stoller, right? Yeah, the great songwriters. They wrote Hound Dog, Jailhouse Rock, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. That's right. Well, here's Kansas City by Trini Lopez. Now, your third album, which was your first studio album, was called The Folk Album. The Folk Album. And that had a song called Lemon Tree that made quite a big splash. What's the story behind that song and recording? In the days that I was recording uh, at, at, in Hollywood and all that in the 60s, uh, folk music was very prevalent, you know. Really, really popular. And I, I, I was into folk music, but I was never into recording it or singing it the way everybody was recording those kind of songs. So again, I put my Latin beat to it in my own style. And um, there was a, my first hit in a recording studio when I went into uh, the studio to record the folk album. It was a big hit for me all over the world. I remember hearing that as a teenager on my uh, car radio quite a bit, got quite a bit of airplay. Mm-hmm. Here's Lemon Tree. All right, Trini, so uh, now it gets a little personal because uh, your fourth album was called The Latin Album, and your producer, Don Costa, got in touch with my dad, Lalo Guerrero, mm -hmm. and asked him to write a lyric to a particular song, which turned out to be a song called Chamaca. And I was about 13 years old, 14, and my dad took me down to the studio, Western Recorders in Hollywood, and we walk in, and there's Trini Lopez... Don Costa and a gigantic orchestra. Mm -hmm. It was very big time. And uh, my dad was there to assist with uh, the lyric. And um, and that was the first time I met you. That was the first time. Uh -huh. So what, what about that song? What do you think about it? And what memories do you have of that? Uh, the song is a beautiful song that your dad wrote. Your, your dad was a, a great talent, a great songwriter, a great singer. And I always liked your dad very much from the very first time I met him. And um, uh, he brought this song, and I loved it. I said, oh, man, i got to record this, you know. And Chamaca means little girl, and it's a story about a little girl growing up. And uh, I recorded it, and it came out really good. I thought it came out great. And I've always liked this song to this day. All right, here's Chamaca. So your next album, which would be the fifth album, was called The Love Album. Mm -hmm. And I would assume it had a lot of romantic songs on it. And you did a version of one of your favorite songs called Laura, mm -hmm. Standard. Now, how did you choose this, and what's the story on that? I chose all my songs. Uh, when I recorded, Don Costa was very, very uh, easy to work with. And, and I would tell him, Don, I love this song. I love that song, you know. And my favorite song of all time, everybody has a favorite song, and my favorite song is Laura, from the motion picture Laura also. And uh, so we went into the studio, and I was very thrilled to do this album because I walked in and there was 60 musicians <laughs> and I felt like I was Frank Sinatra, you know, and uh, I did some beautiful love songs. My favorite songs are love songs, by the way. Everybody thinks that La Bamba is my favorite song and If I Had a Hammer and Lemon Tree and all this. Now, my favorite songs personally are love songs. So this album means a lot to me because it was, a, thank God it was a big hit. And uh, I did 12 of the most beautiful love songs of that time. And Laura was one of them. So this recording shows the crooning, vocalizing, romantic side of Trini Lopez. Here's Laura. The success of the Latin album brought on a sequel, and you had the second Latin album in a row here. And on that, you did another of my dad's songs, a famous song called Pancho Lopez. Right. And uh, what gave you the idea to record that? Don Costa brought me this song that your dad wrote at that time, and, uh, and I really liked it because it was a... Uh, he had the melody of uh, David Crockett, and your dad wrote some very clever Spanish uh, lyrics to the song. And I loved it. It was funny. It was a funny lyric. And uh, they wanted me to do another Latin album because the first one was a big success. So this one was called the second Latin album. And so I recorded Pancho Lopez. And to this day, all over the world, people love to listen to that. And they, they email me about that song and all that. You know, It's a great song. Uh, let's listen to it. Here's Pancho Lopez by Trini Lopez. <laughs> uh, Trini, this next song is really near and dear to you. Uh, you were contacted to sing a song for a motion picture mm -hmm. called Made in Paris. And uh, tell us about this. That was the second time that I sang a song in a movie. Because my first time to sing in a movie was a 
movie that Frank Sinatra put me in, a movie called Marriage on the Rocks. And it was a song that I helped write called Cinnamon. But this song, Made in Paris, was the first time for me to sing the title song at the beginning of the credits and at the end of the credits. And it was written by the great uh, uh, Burt Bacharach. And I was very happy to work with him because he was, he was very exciting. At that time, he was very hot with his writing. You know. It was the peak of his career. Yeah. So this gave you a chance to really show your vocal chops, didn't it? Thank you. So let's listen to that. Made in Paris. In the late 80s, uh, you did a, a CD by this point. Wasn't it a CD? Uh, yeah, by that time. And it was called Dance the Night Away, which you produced yourself. Mm -hmm. And uh, the title track is one that really uh, rocks in a Latin way, right? Right. It has a Latin rock to it. So tell me about this album and that single. I wanted to record an album with the best musicians in Hollywood that I could find. And uh, I went into the studio and I spent a good six months recording this album. And uh, the album, I think, came out really good. It's selling on the Internet to this day. And uh, there's a lot of good songs in here. And um, the title song is called Dance the Night Away, and that's the title of the album. Let's listen to it. Dance the Night Away. In 2002, you cut a CD called Trini Lopez, Legacy, My Texas Roots. And it included your brother. What was the story on that? This is uh, my... My last album before my brand new album that I just finished. And this album, I was very, very happy to go to Dallas, my hometown, and record because uh, I haven't recorded in Dallas in a long, long time, not since I was a teenager. And a friend of mine wanted to record this album. It was his idea to, uh, to do uh, this kind of an album. It's a rockabilly Texas swing uh, album and um, CD. And the, some great songs that I used to to sing when I was a kid. And there's two or three songs in here that I even wrote when I was like 19, 18, 19 years old. And my brother Jesse plays with me in four or five songs. My brother plays uh, tenor sax, and he plays real funky harmonica. And it was fun uh, going to Dallas to record again for the first time in a long, long time. Well, it sounds really good, and you're in great voice. And uh, my favorite track is one that's uh, kind of a rockabilly song that I know you co-wrote, and it's called I Know You Know You Do. <laughs> and what's the story in that particular song? When I was about 18 years old, I, I met a guy named uh, Dwayne Sheffield, and he was my buddy. And we wrote a lot of songs together, and that's one of them. All right, let's listen to it. Let's hear you rock out here. I Know You Know You Do by Trini Lopez. Here it is. Now we have arrived at your latest album, recorded in 2004. We're getting a little personal on this one, too, because I participated on this album. That's right. And uh, the name of the album is Romantic and Sexy Guitars. Right. A romantic and Sexy, sexy guitars. guitars. And um, the first track on here is one of my favorites, and it's uh, your version of Una Paloma Blanca. Mm -hmm. And I really like this. It's got a lot of acoustic guitars on it. It's mm -hmm. very stark. You're playing all the guitars, and you're playing percussion, and you're singing all the parts, and it's very organic and... I think very hip, and I really like it. Now, what, do you, what do you think about it? And it was recorded in my friend's studio, Leon Beckin. That's right. Here in uh, Rancho Mirage, Cal yes. California. Yes. So uh, tell me about the selection of that song and the idea behind this album. Well, uh, you were kind enough to introduce me to Leon Beckin. He's a very good uh, engineer uh, here in, uh, in the Palm Springs area. He has a very good studio. And um, uh, I liked him, and I liked the studio very much. The minute I walked in, I, I knew I liked it. And I... For a long time, I've had an idea to do an album of nothing but my guitars the way I used to record when I started, you know, my career. Because I got into big bands and horns and brass, everything, you know, and uh, timpanis and all, you know. So I wanted to go back to kind of my roots on this one, too. So um, we recorded for a good four or five months. And uh, you're going to play a song that uh, you like, which is the first cut, Una Paloma Blanca. But I must say also that you wrote a song in here that is going to be a great hit, I think, Oh Maria, that you wrote. Thank you very much. We're going to hear that after this one. Okay. <laughs> uh, so right now, let's listen to Una Paloma Blanca, just recorded uh, in 2004. You mentioned my song, Oh Maria. What made you select that song? I, I gave you a few songs for consideration, and, and you liked that one a lot. And tell me what happened there. You, you gave me like three or four or five songs, and they were all great because you're a very good songwriter. Thank you. You're very good. But, uh, but this song really sort of uh, stuck out, you know, and uh, I, I liked it right away very much. 
and uh, I just I just decided to do it, and it came out great. And you uh, you came into the studio and you did your great uh, guitar playing in the uh, in the song, and uh, it's a great tune, man. Thank you. It's kind of like a Norteño song in English. Huh? There right. we go. It's a polka. Yeah, there we go. We may start a some kind of a revolutionary type music uh, trend here. Polka revolution. There we go. So here it is. Oh, Maria. So, Trini, uh, you know, I, as we, I said earlier in the show, we met way back when I was a teenager. And, and when I moved out here to the Palm Springs area in the late 80s, uh, we reconnected because you've been living here for quite a while. Uh-huh. I've gotten to know you a lot better. And uh, you've come down to my regular gig downtown in Palm Springs. Uh, you come quite often and mm-hmm. we, we hang out quite a bit. Mm-hmm. And I really appreciate you coming in and doing my show. And uh, just want to thank you. My pleasure, Mark. And you, you're a great guy, and I love uh, watching your shows. You have a great band, and you play excellent guitar. I wish I could play as good as you. And uh, you, you sing very well. You have a great rock voice and very commercial voice, which is a compliment, you know. Well, thanks a lot, Trini, and uh, I'll see you down at the club next time. You got it. You've been listening to Mark Guerrero's Chicano Music Chronicles, produced and hosted by Mark Guerrero. Executive producer, Frank Miranda. Production and imaging by David Tyler. For further information on this program, visit www.chicanomusicchronicles.com. 